Hello Internet! Today I kind of wanted to finish off our our ship controller, our top-down ship controller, by adding a ability to move by following a mouse. Uh, so right now, if I were to start this, we have three different movements that you can kind of perform. One is straight like this, uh, not straight like this, uh, but you can either do like direct movement, uh, so your directional movement actually maps directly and does like a, a sliding movement. Uh, like a classic arcade game, uh, one that rotates and moves forward, and then this one which is sort of adaptive and kind of moves in a direction. What I want to do is be able to give a, a mouse point to our game and have it figure out how to drive towards that mouse point and then theoretically stop there. Uh, and, and so there's, there's a few ways we can do this, but I think it'll be a fun way to kind of leave it off and hopefully it'll be a little bit more intuitive and there, there's some other options I guess for this so like waypoint go like moving to waypoints and things like that uh, so that that's what we're going to do the way this works is there is an input controller that looks like this and so what this this is doing is setting our ship input controllers uh, vertical and horizontal inputs directly to something and then working with those the other one, uh, I don't know if that's the one I wanted. <laughs> okay, I think I may have confused myself. The movement controller is what I wanted. There we go. So that, <laughs> this is going to be the, the direction. Uh, so if we go into our game, if I press up, the vertical is going to be 1 and the horizontal is going to be 0. So that's sort of the, the vector we want to travel on. Then we have this movement controller that's going to actually figure that out. And so if I press up, it actually figures out and drives towards that. The thing we're trying to do is calculate that vector, that direction vector to, to turn towards, instead of providing it manually. Uh, so instead of taking it from a joystick or from our input on our keyboard or something, we want to derive it from the mouse position and the ship's location. Uh, so I think the best way to do that is to create a new uh, C sharp script, and so we can follow the same style I guess we've been doing previously. So ship input controller publisher mouse follower. That is a very very long class name, uh, but it'll be enough for for this. And so what I'm going to start with is more or less just copy and paste what we have in our other publisher. And so all of this stuff can come across and just replace it. And then what we can do is stop this, go into our spaceship and remove the current one we're using and replace it with the mouse follower. Uh, so we'll just grab this and remove the publisher. And there we go. And so now we have three We have three components here. We have the publisher, uh, which is saying move towards the mouse. Uh, we have the ship input controller, which is just storing data about what inputs we have. That'll be the vector we actually want to go in, go towards. And then the movement controller actually handles what we do with that input. Uh, and, and so we're not actually going to worry too much about that. We've done that in previous videos. And we're not going to worry too much about the ship input controller either. Those, those are just either data objects or stuff we've already done. <laughs> and so the input controller needs to take a mouse point and then the, there's two options that I'm kind of considering. One would be to create a plane across the, the play axis. Uh, so sort of do this, create a plane, uh, make it invisible, and then shoot a ray into it and then get the point of contact of that ray and then pass that in. That works uh, and it has some advantages for like if you're doing uneven terrain for example like in an RTS it might be better but I think we can also just derive it so just taking a ray we can actually take the the Y axis the down axis and divide that by the height of where our camera is so our camera is at position 10 so let's say we take it's straight down. That would be 1 divided by 10, which would get us 10. And then we can uh, multiply the x and the z by that value and get how much it actually would move total 
like the sum of the full movement until it hits the plane. Uh, this only works for directly top down. It, the math gets far more complicated if it's not immediately straight down. Uh, like if you're if your camera is physically at an angle, not like perspective stuff. Uh, so th there's a few other things, and honestly, the easiest way to do this is just with a perspective or a ortho orthographic camera. But we're we're not using that, so we're gonna skip the plane and do the math one because I think that'll be better, easier. I don't really know. I haven't done either, uh, but you're welcome to do either. And one, this one actually kind of leads into the other. Uh, you just have to kind of actually use the ray in a ray cast instead of just faking it like we're going to do. So we have our input controller here, and we're going to have. I'm going to just store our ship's position just because I think that'll be an easier way to, to handle this. So ship location is going to be this transform position. And so that's just the current ship location. That's what we're going to be comparing to because we need a point of reference for our mouse because our mouse is going to be in world space and then we need the ship in world space so we can figure out the vector between the two. Uh, if we just get where the mouse is, that isn't necessarily going to be very helpful because like the camera can move and, and the ship can move and then you, you lose your perspective from that. Uh, so hopefully this, this solves that. And then the next thing is we want a way to do the camera stuff. We can provide a camera or we can do camera.main, which will get the main camera. Either one should work. This one is a little bit more risky, uh, but it's also easier. Uh, the other alternative is to make it a, like a public camera reference camera and so that would be like the top-down camera uh, that we would want to reference main is just going to take your camera that is labeled main camera uh, if I go back into here you've got main camera and the tag main camera you can have one camera tagged main camera I, you can probably have more but it might not work as you expect uh, unity automatically finds that main camera and uses it when in the camera dot main so if you're just using that uh, that's all you need to do we're going to use it as a reference, though, because I, I think that's just better. <laughs> and, and at least a little bit easier. And if we have multiple cameras, it just makes it makes it simpler. So we'll grab our spaceship, do our main camera, throw that in as the reference camera. And then we can reference that inside of here and do our reference camera dot uh, screen point to ray. And so this is going to create a ray. Uh, which is going to give us a position and a direction of a ray that we are going to cast from our camera based on some input position. This is going to be a screen space position because it's a screen point to ray. And so we can do input dot mouse position like that. And so that's going to get our screen space mouse position, plug it in, get a ray out of that. So this will be our camera ray. And then the idea is we are going to cast that ray down until it hits the zero plane. And so the way to do this, uh, because we can kind of cheat a little bit, uh, we have our camera position at some Y axis and we're shooting it straight down. We're trying to hit down. Uh, the math is going to change if you're in, if you're using a 2D game, but that's kind of the whole way this project has worked. We're doing 3D math and 3D stuff. Uh, so we're we're going to be working on the y-axis. Uh, 2D will probably be along the z-axis. So uh, you just need to figure out what what your game is doing to figure out if this is if this is what actually makes sense. Uh, but from that camera ray, we get a direction here and an origin. Uh, you can't see that. <laughs> it's kind of cutting it off. Uh, so the direction is going to be the direction the camera is going. Uh, so it's actually going to show you where your camera, or, or not not where your camera is, but where that point is going to cast in, in screen space. And so we can use this and kind of get a, a reference of where things are going to go. Uh, so this direction is going to have an X, Y, and Z. We want the Y component. And so the idea here, let's scroll that up just so it's a little bit easier in that uh, screencasting thing isn't constantly popping up over my code. Uh, so 
camera ray direction dot y. This should be negative based on off of where above we're shooting down. So we're going negative y in some direction. That's not actually what we want. We want some sort of positive thing. Uh, just because we're, we're dividing and I just want positive numbers. And we're going to divide that by the height of our camera. And that's going to tell us the number of iterations of this ray until we collide with the ground plane at zero. Uh, and so to do that, we can just do our reference camera, reference camera dot transform position dot y divided by this. And so this is going to return some sort of float. Uh, so let's just say a ray iteration count. I feel like that's redundant in the name, but we'll, we'll stick with it. <laughs> and so that the value we get out of here is going to be some fractional number of rays we're going to cat or steps we're going to take until we hit this. And then what we can do is use that to calculate the X and the Y position. And so our resulting uh, plane space uh, mouse, uh, weird, weird reference, but effectively just the point on the zero Y plane where the mouse is. Uh, so where, where the mouse is in that reference. So we're going to do vector three dot, uh, let's create a new one. <laughs> That's what I want. New vector three. Uh, our Y is going to be zero, so I can fill that in right now. And then the X and the Y is going to be equal to our camera ray dot origin dot X plus the camera ray dot direction dot X times the ray iteration count. So we have some origin position of where our camera is in some direction the ray is facing, and we're going to take x step or n number of steps in that direction uh, for both the x and the z axis. And so the result of this, if I can copy and paste correctly, is kind of a gross function that looks like this and uses z instead of y. <laughs> there we go. And so this should if we've done it correctly, get us a position in world space where our mouse is. We can test this, hopefully, by taking those out. I don't really care about providing input right now. Instead, I want to void on draw gizmos. And we're going to write this plane space mouse out to a vector three uh, mouse position. And we'll just default that to vector 3.0 so it's always got some sort of initial value to it. Otherwise, we might have like null references, and that that's just no fun. So we're gonna we're gonna pretend like we can't have that. Uh, and this is mostly for testing anyway, so uh, not super worried about it. I just kind of want to see if we're getting a, a gizmo at our mouse. And so we're going to plug this plane space mouse position in, and we should be able to draw a gizmo at that point. And it should be able to move our mouse around and see it follow that if things are working the way we want. Uh, so let's choose a, a color that makes sense. Blue. <laughs> and do a draw wire sphere at our, what do we call it? The mouse position with a radius of like 0.5. Yeah, sure. Uh, so the diameter of one, I guess. <laughs> we actually need to set this mouse position because I'm not doing that right now. Uh, so mouse position equals our plane space mouse. And assuming this works, then we can kind of take the next step and start comparing this to our ship position and everything should, uh, should work out pretty well, hopefully. So that is sort of what we want here. There we go. Everything seems to have saved. So if I start this now, Hopefully, yeah, we get a, that's kind of a darker blue than I was hoping, but we'd get a blue gizmo underneath our mouse. And so that is, is sort of what we want. It means that our mouse 
position is now working. And if I if I actually open up the scene view here, you can kind of see it's on the uh, it's on the zero plane, which is is what we want. That means that it's actually doing what I want instead of just like drawing it at the mouse, which would mean something was broken. So that's cool. That means it's working. So I'm going to keep that debugging stuff, I guess. Uh, it, it could be useful. And there's two-ish ways we can kind of work through the next bit. I'm going to do the easy way first. <laughs> and so what we want to do is get a direction but from these two things. And so the easiest way I know to get a direction is to subtract two vectors and then normalize them. Uh, and so direction equals our mouse position minus our ship location. I feel like this is backwards, but we'll know real quick. <laughs> so we are going to just wrap those and do a normalized to just get the normalized vector of this, which means it's going to have a length of one. Uh, and that is kind of handy because it just means that we don't have like both things max at the same time. Uh, if you are accelerating, you're not going to be turning. And if you're turning, you're not going to be accelerating. I, I feel like that just gives you a, a more intuitive movement. And then what we want is just the horizontal is just the direction dot X and the vertical is the direction dot Z. Uh, X and Z because 3D space and, and stuff and Y is up and down. So Y should be zero in this case. If it isn't, then we've done something wrong, but that should be that. And so theoretically, I should be able to start this, hopefully, <laughs> and we should drive towards our mouse. The problem with this is it never stops. Uh, I can move and it will fly there and then it will do this weird like either jitter or spin or something like that because we're normalizing our vector we're, ne we're never going to get zero and so we can fix that in a number of ways I'm going to kind of uh, cheat a little bit because this isn't this isn't something I mean it's it's going to be different like how this looks depending on what you're what you're building uh, and so solving it in all those different ways doesn't really make sense here but part of the problem is when you normalize a vector, even if it's less than one, it's going to expand that vector until it has a length of one. We don't necessarily want that. Uh, and so we're going to say our direction is equal to this. And then if our direction dot magnitude is greater than one, then the direction should be normalized. If it falls below one, it will start ramping down. Uh, linear like it will it will not normalize it it will just be less than one uh, and so you should still get all those fun benefits but it will slow down uh, and once it actually reaches the point it should be close or or at zero and so you shouldn't get any extra movement and so we'll do this uh, direction equals our direction dot normalized there we go uh, we can change this let's just Use a normalize instead. So normalize is the in place version of dot normalized. Uh, they do the same thing. They both give you a normalized vector, but normalize is a function that will normalize the existing vector three that you provide it. Normalized returns a new one. Uh, so depending on what you're doing, one's easier than the other. This should avoid like allocating new memory. So uh, shouldn't be a problem here but I'll bring it up anyway. So if we restart this now, as our ship gets to our point, I would expect it to stop. <laughs> Clearly that's not happening. Huh. Well, that's odd. Uh, if direction.magnitude is greater than one, Mouse position minus the ship location. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that was supposed to work. Uh, I don't know why it didn't. Direction. 
mouse position, ship location. Both of those should be blah. Let's debug.log. Ooh, that's not right. Normalized. Uh, and let's actually print out our vector two. So let's print it out before we normalize it, just so we know what's going on. There we go. Uh, because I'm kind of confused. Why the vector right now? Uh, it's it's covered up, but the vector is one point one zero point two, which doesn't seem right to me. And now it's zero point eight and zero point seven. Why is it off so much if it's that's weird. I don't know. Um, I may need to. I may need to think on that and leave like an answer or something in a description or comment or something because I don't know why that is bigger than I think it should be. Maybe I've overlooked something, but I don't think I have. Origin .z, camera direction .z. I think that's what I wanted. And it seems to be getting close. So I'm confused on why it is the way that it is. I would expect it to uh, behave differently with those values. Huh. Well, uh, that was a poor, poor example, I guess. But uh, we'll, I'm going to leave that there, I think, because I don't know how to fix that or, or what's causing it. And I'm not entirely sure that I wanna I wanna spend the time debugging it. It seems like there is some very small offset, but it's just causing us to rotate. Oh Oh, 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 okay. I know what's going on. <laughs> the problem isn't with what, what we're doing here. The problem is in our ship input or our ship movement controller. We're running into the same problem there, and that isn't isn't shortening things. Uh, so our input values are very small, but they're being blown up significantly by the ship movement controller, which isn't actually accounting for that. Uh, and so, so that's that's a bug there. We're not going to fix that here, but that's what's going on. Uh, so, like, if you see when it actually gets here, the ship input controller, the actual inputs for what to do are very small. That's why we're not moving forward in this case. But the movement controller doesn't care. It's using a normalized vector like we were using before, uh, and so that's making the rotation very strong, uh, and that's what's causing it to spin. Or in this case, actually get close enough that it, it doesn't spin. But that's that's where the spin is coming from. So we can fix that in, in the ship movement controller, and I'll do that in the source. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's how to make it follow the mouse. Uh, I didn't really go too much into how to do it with the plane. Uh, but what you can do is instead of all this fun math, you can take this uh, screen point array and plug that into a physics dot raycast or a physics dot box cast which will cast a box instead of a ray or a sphere cast which makes a lot more sense than a box cast to me uh, and that will shoot like a array but it will have a width to it uh, a diameter uh, so if you're trying to like deal with corners and things like that uh, make things a little bit smoother so it kind of wraps around corners sphere cast can be nice for that uh, but I'll leave it there that's probably probably too much meandering for, for, for this video. So uh, hopefully this was helpful and you can kind of use this in your projects. Uh, but that's, that's mouse following, I guess. Uh, so if you do use this, I'd love to see what you make with it. Uh, if you have other ideas for things you think we should do, 
let me know in the comments and I'll try to get the source for this up on GitHub soon-ish. I know the project itself hasn't had the source released yet, so I'll do that. I need to move it all to a separate project because this was just a tinkering project inside of another one that isn't where it should be. Uh, so <laughs> that's it for this fun. So until next time, see you, internet.